Welcome to example program. In this video, we will see how we can write a C program to reverse a number entered by the user. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask the user to enter the number. User will enter a number in a decimal number system. And then we take that number and we reverse it and we will display that to the screen. Now, how we are going to reverse this number is now first, let us say the user is going to enter the number one, two, three. Now, what we do is we take this number one, two, three, which is in decimal number system and we divide this number by 10 and we will check for the quotient and the reminder value. Now, if we have one, two, three in here, when we divide it by 10, the divisor is 10. The quotient is actually 12. So it will be 120 and we get the reminder as three here. Now, if you look at this closely, then this three is the last digit. And after that, if you look at this quotient, which is 12 in this case, it is the remaining numbers. So what we do is we take this quotient again, which is 12 and we divide it by 10 again. Now what happens? We get the quotient as one and we get the reminder as two. Now here, if you look at this, then this two is the last digit of this uh, number 12 and we get this quotient one and if we divide this one by 10 again the reminder value that we get will be the last digit that is if we divide one by 10 we get zero here so zero so this one which is a reminder is the last digit and the next thing that we do is we will calculate the reverse number now here what we're going to do is we're going to write the program first and then let's see how the uh, code will work. I hope you guys know how we separate the numbers in here. So here in this program, I have uh, written some code. I have included the stdio.h header file, and then I have written the main function, which is the entry point of our program. So the first thing that we do in our program is we will declare the variables that we are going to use. I'm going to take the integer type and the first variable is for storing the number entered by the user. I'm going to call it as number. And after that, we need another variable for storing the reminder value that we are going to calculate. So I'm going to call it as reminder. And then we need another variable for storing the reversed number that we are going to calculate. So I'm going to call it as real number. And we will initialize this with a value of zero. And after that, we will ask the user to enter a number. We will read it and we will store it in this number variable. So I'm going to use the printf function in here and it will be enter an integer and the user will enter the number. We will take that by using this canf function and we will store that in our number variable. Now what we're going to do is as long as the number variable contains a value greater than zero, we will keep on dividing it by 10 and we will find out the quotient and the reminder value. So I'm going to use a while loop in here and I will have the condition as number greater than zero. Then the first thing that we do is we will calculate the reminder value. So we will write reminder equal to number modulus operator 10. And after that, when we divide the value stored in the number variable by 10, whatever the reminder that we get, it is the last digit. Now the remaining digits can be found in the quotient value. So what we do is we take the quotient value and we will store that in the number variable. So we will write number equal to number divided by 10. So in this first expression, we are getting only reminder value. And in this second expression, we are getting the quotient value. Now, if we run this loop, then if you print out the value present in the reminder variable here, then we get each separate digits of the number. Now, after that, what we, what we have to do is we have to calculate the reversed number. So what we do is we will write reverse number equal to reverse number multiplied by 10 plus reminder. So we will take the reverse number, which we have initialized to zero in the beginning. 
we will multiply it by 10 and we will add the remainder value that we have calculated in our code to that reverse number and we will store that in the reverse number variable. Now when we come out of this loop we have the reversed number in this real number variable. Now after running this program I will explain how this code will work and uh, here outside this while loop we can print out the reverse number we can say reversed number is percentage d now let's run this enter an integer i'm going to enter one two three and it says reversed number is three two one so now let's see how this uh, code will work now here let's assume that the user is going to enter the number one two three uh, in the beginning, we have uh, initialized the reverse number variable with a value of zero. Now here, the while loop will be executed. So the number variable is containing a value greater than zero. Number variable is containing one, two, three. So we execute the body of this while loop. We execute these three lines of code. So first we calculate the reminder value. So first we divide one, two, three by 10 and we check the reminder value. We get three as the reminder and we get 12 as quotient. So what we do is we will uh, uh, take this reminder value in the reminder variable. So the reminder variable now will get three, which is the last digit. And after that, we are finding this quotient value and we are storing that in the number variable. Now the number variable will get 12 after this statement, okay? And after that, we are calculating the reverse number by performing reverse number multiplied by 10 plus reminder. So it will be 0 multiplied by 10 plus the value of the reminder variable, which is 3. So it will be 3. And now the reverse number variable will get 3. So number variable is containing 12 and reverse number variable is containing 3. Now after that, uh, again, this while loop condition is checked, which is number greater than zero and uh, number is containing 12, which is greater than zero. So we execute the while loop body again. We calculate the reminder value by dividing 12 divided by 10 because number is containing 12. So when you divide 12 divided by 10, we get the quotient as one and we get the reminder as two. So that reminder value two will be stored in the reminder variable. And after that, we store the quotient value, which is one in this number variable. So number variable will get one here this time. And after that, we calculate the uh, reverse number by performing reverse number multiplied by 10 plus reminder. Reverse number is containing three here. So it will be three multiplied by 10 plus reminder, which is two. So it will be 32. Now the reverse number will get 32. Again, this while loop condition will be checked where number is greater than zero, number is containing one. So we execute the body of this while loop again. So first we find out the reminder value when we divide the number present in the number variable by 10. So it will be one divided by 10. So the quotient is zero and the reminder is one. 10 zeros are zero and we get and we get one as the reminder and zero as the quotient. So the reminder variable will get one. And after that, we are uh, storing this quotient value in this number variable. That is, uh, again, we are dividing number, uh, number variables value by 10 and we are storing that in the number variable. So here, now the number variable will get zero. That is the quotient value. And after that, uh, we are calculating the reverse number and that is reverse number multiplied by 10 plus reminder. Reverse number is containing 32. So it will be 32 multiplied by 10 plus reminder, which is one. So it will be 320 plus one, which is equal to three, two, one. So the number we entered in the beginning was one, two, three, and we get the output as three, two, one. Now, since this number variable is containing a value of zero, the while loop will stop. We come out of this while loop and we will display this number value to the screen. Now here in this while loop, 
first we are calculating the remainder value and then we are calculating the quotient value when we perform this uh, modulus operation we get only remainder value so if you want the quotient value then you know we have to perform this uh, division again so you know in one step we can't get the quotient and the remainder so that's why we are we are performing them separately so this is it guys for this video Thank you for watching. If you like it, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. If you want to say something, then write it in the comment box. For more tutorials like this, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later in the next video.